Adventure Quest 8-Bit Dungeons and Doom Knights is an 8-bit package with the main attraction being the Zeldavania title Dungeons and Doom Knights. It's an experience that draws most of its inspiration from Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link and Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, both of which were originally released on the Nintendo Entertainment System. But it brings a more modern take on these two classics and manages to stand out as a result. Before we get started with the review, if you enjoy indie games and love learning about smaller titles that don't get a lot of coverage, consider clicking that subscribe button as I do my best to help spread the word about some of these harder to find games. Thanks for watching this review, now let's dive into it. The game starts off with a brief scene introducing the hero Artix as he descends upon the land from a flying dragon. It's here where you'll see the first perspective of the game, which is a pseudo overhead view, which is used in certain areas and the overworld. The other perspective is your typical 2D side-scrolling view, which is common in dungeons and caves. Initially, you're armed with your axe and the ability to jump, but over the course of your adventure, you'll learn a handful of new skills and acquire upgrades to your health, damage output, and spirit skulls, which acts like your magic and sub-weapon charges. Dungeons and Doom Knights does a great job of easing you into the game with a very linear path to start off before cutting you loose into its large open world. It's honestly quite impressive how large the world is with a lot of variety to the map. The expansive land provides quite a few caves to explore and many different biomes. There's minimal guidance given, so it's completely up to you to figure out where to head next, but the world is built in a way where certain areas will be blocked off since you lack the skills to progress further in that direction. This ensures that you don't spend too much time lost before ultimately stumbling upon your next objective, but I would have liked to see an NPC in the town that you could pay a small fee for a hint as there was a few times I felt myself wandering around aimlessly till I stumbled upon where I needed to go, but as long as you pay close attention to each of the game's many screens as you explore, you shouldn't be lost for too long. The town acts as the hub area where you can refill your health, engage in dialogue with the NPCs, with some of them offering up side quests for you to embark on while providing beneficial rewards for their completion. There's also a key vendor in the town and a house you can purchase with your hard-earned coins. You won't spend a lot of time here, but it does provide some side activities for you to engage in. The gameplay loop is pretty easy to explain. You'll head to an area, acquire a new upgrade or skill, head to the next area, and repeat. There are quite a few axe upgrades, which give it the ability to destroy certain blocks for each new one you acquire. You'll have quite a few skills at your disposal throughout your adventure. Things like projectile reflection, healing spell, rune warping, but none you will find more useful in my opinion than your faithful companion. The dog is a nice addition and you'll even find yourself controlling it a few times. And if you really want more, there's a bonus mode you can play, but we'll talk about the bonus modes later. Dungeons and Doom Knights has a lot of variety to it that keeps it feeling fresh throughout with many different upgrades and skills, varied biomes to explore, plenty of secrets, quite a few different enemy types and a lot of different bosses to battle. Every time I cleared a new area and was confident I had completed everything there was to do in one of the game's many biomes, I was anxious to head to the next and see what more I could discover constant sense of progression and wonderment is what kept me excited to keep playing. It's a highlight of the experience to always have something new to engage in, all the way through to the end screen. Dungeons and Doom Knights is not without its fair share of flaws though. At times the hit detection is a bit on the wonky side, both with striking objects such as rocks that block your path, and also trying to walk around certain objects. It happened pretty frequently that I found myself getting stuck on something it felt like I shouldn't have been colliding with. 
Going through doors can be overly touchy where I found myself transporting back and forth rapidly. I had to be extra careful and precise in my movements at times to prevent this from happening. And another issue that I had, which I'd like to think is universal for everybody, is the bat form skill that you'll earn fairly early on. This allows you to automatically turn into bats to fly around, and given the NES constraints, I understand why this would be hard to implement in a flawless manner. But since it triggers automatically, there were so many times where enemies are on screen and I'm just trying to jump an attack and it's automatically turning me into the bats resulting in a hit since you can't attack while in a bat form. It provided a frustrating experience in a lot of scenarios where it's used. Again, I want to reiterate I understand why it functions the way it does, but should have been used primarily on screens with no combat to eliminate the frustrating navigation with the immediate threat of death. Which I'll admit, it got me killed quite a few times. But with all of that said, Dungeons & Doom Knights is a game crafted with a lot of love. Not just the titular game in the package, but also the bonuses you can engage in. Multiple endings, the great instruction manual, and the Pretendo online magazine that looks like a lost issue of Nintendo Power. There's a lot here to see and do, with most of it being highly enjoyable. The Chaos mods offer a new way to play, and the bonus game Necronancy was really fun to play. A well-crafted map that looks like it would have been included as a print with your NES copy back in the day is helpful to look at and take in what the world has to offer. This package has a lot of the modern bells and whistles you could possibly want from a modern NES release. It has plenty of visual options, frequent saving, high quality map, manual, and magazine scans. It's just a well rounded out package that I had an absolute blast with. For fans of the classic 2D Zelda and Castlevania titles, this is an absolute no brainer to snag a copy and play for yourself. And with multiple endings and plenty of bonus content, there are many reasons to play after you reach that end screen. Let me know in the comments if you plan on playing this, or maybe you already have. Did you enjoy it? I hope so, because I definitely did. Dungeons & Doom Knights is available on the Nintendo Switch eShop and on PC via Steam. You can even purchase a physical copy for the NES if you're looking for that authentic retro experience or the digital ROM. I'll post links in the description below to all the different options if you're interested. Thank you for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, please like the video, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you haven't done so already as I cover a lot of different indie games on my channel. Hope to see you on my next video, but until then, have a good one.